the Gutter Trash, episode 185. Red. My name is Eric. I'm Jason. How's it going? Huh? Sick. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I hope you can uh, make it through this episode. I think I can. If, uh, you know, your, your heart starts, uh, or, or stops beating, <laughs> uh, give me some sort of signal. Let me know. I will, uh, run to my phone and dial 911. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, whatever we can do to, uh, keep you alive. Well, I've got orange juice. Okay. I think that, that should do it. The, the life-giving properties of orange juice. Yeah. There's a nice tall cool glass of OJ. A yakety schmackety. <laughs> it is. It is a cool glass of OJ. Yeah. I, I am drinking How water. How are you doing? Drinking water? Yeah. It is not cold. No. Oh. No. Lukewarm. Room temperature. Room temperature. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, you don't want it too cold or it'll hurt your teeth. No, I want it really cold. Really? Yeah. It's water. Yeah. Okay. It should be cold. So I don't like it cold. Uh, it hurts my teeth. If it's not cold, what's the point of having water? <laughs> I don't know where this is going. Yeah. I don't know why it started. Liquid talk. Um, Let's stop that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about this movie, I guess. Oh, Red? Yeah. Okay. I mean, unless there's something else you want to talk about. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, I think we've said all we can say about our orange juice and our water. Yeah. So there's <laughs> nothing else left. We've been backed into a corner. <laughs> <laughs> we sort of have to at this point. Right. <laughs> So this movie, Red. It's uh, one of two movies called Red. Uh, I think there's actually more than two. Really? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but probably the two best known movies named Red. Both starring Brian Cox. Really? Yeah. Brian Cox in the, other, in the Morgan Freeman and Bruce Willis one? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. But this is not that one. This is not that one. Okay. This is the one in which uh, Byron Cox is the uh, the main star, the lead, even. Mm-hmm. I think he might be the villain in the other red. Uh, uh, yeah. The Bruce Willis uh, Helen Mirren vehicle. Ooh. Perhaps a John Malkovich. Wow, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's all stars. Maybe even Richard Dreyfus. Ooh. Is, uh, I can't remember if he's in that or not. And Bronson Pinchot. <laughs> he may or may not be in that movie. <laughs> Have yet to see it. Me too. Yeah. Uh, that one is based on the comic yeah. by Warren Ellis and Cully Hamner. This one is based on a novel by Jack Ketchum. It's about Brian Cox meeting three Magic the Gathering players <laughs> <laughs> in the woods <laughs> and the troubles that follow. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> they totally play Magic together. <laughs> At least Danny, or whatever his name is. Is that the blonde haired kid? Yeah. Danny. Yeah. Danny, Harold, and Pete. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is, um, not what I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> uh, <coughs> I mean, I certainly knew the rough plot outline of this, and I knew that it wasn't the other movie called Red. Yeah. Right. Um,. But uh, I had heard about this movie because it was covered extensively in magazines like Fangoria and Rue Morgue. Oh, wow, really? And so I was under the assumption that uh, maybe I got a little horror-y at some point. All right, yeah. It, it does not. No, nope. spoiler. Yeah. Uh, it is not a horror movie at all. It's yeah. horrific at times. Yeah. 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 There's horrific things that happen. Yeah. Especially if you're a pet owner like, yeah. like myself. <clears throat> But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's not a spoiler. It's pretty much, uh, you know, happens within the first ten minutes of the movie. It's, uh, you know, right probably on the back of the box. <laughs> but, uh, I, I don't know why that was funny other than... I don't know why the back of the box cracked me up. <laughs> it's probably the cold medicine. <laughs> <laughs> it's Walgreens generic cold medicine. You are on cold medicine, which is uh, unusual for you. I don't take medicine. Yeah. But, so, uh, so this must be uh, a pretty bad cold you've got. Well, it fucked me up. Yeah. yeah. I had like a 24 hours of not a good time. So, <laughs> so I was like, I need to get this nipped. 
Yeah. And then you came over here and, uh, no. No. <laughs> and now we're recording it for the world. <laughs> yeah. That's right. The world. Yes. Listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. For the ten. Yeah. The <laughs> ten people who might listen. Right. Yeah. I'm guessing it's more like three. Three. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, I know the, uh, uh, yeah, so Brian Cox, uh, plays a guy named Avery Ludlow, who's just a simple, lonely man whose only friend in the world is his dog, Red. And he takes it out for a fishing trip one day and runs into three Magic the Gathering players in the woods. Uh, and they kill the dog as they attempt to, uh, rob Avery. Yeah. And it's pretty much, uh... Avery's, uh, attempted justice throughout the rest of the movie. Right. Yeah. His Plot l- over. His long, grueling, uh, uh snail pace attempted justice <laughs> over the course of the next two hours. Uh, take it you didn't like it. I did not. Alright. I did not. I didn't love it. Um, but it was okay. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised you even thought it was okay. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, uh, the time for it didn't drag uh, like apparently it did for you. <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, because it's actually a fairly short movie. Uh, 90 minutes, less than 90 Is minutes. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I would not have guessed that. <laughs> Maybe my... Uh, Internal clock is off because of the medicine, but I would have guessed 16 hours. No, nope. no, seriously, I would have guessed like 2 hours and 20 right. minutes. Oh, I, no. I thought it was more than 2 hours. Nope. Wow. Uh, it is uh, less than 90 minutes, about 88 minutes. Ow! Uh, <laughs> with credits. <laughs> um... Yeah, it's not great by any stretch of the mean no. uh, imagination. Um, it's I mean, it's a revenge movie, right? It's a revenge movie. Uh, but it's like the most doddering revenge movie I've ever seen. Well, I mean, the main character is kind of a doddering old man. You've seen Harry Brown? Yeah. They don't have to be doddering. <laughs> <laughs> Took him quite a while to start getting revenge too, <laughs> but he kicked ass when he did. Yeah, he did. Uh, <laughs> towards the end of this movie, I, I I summed up in my head uh, how I would describe this movie if I was pitching it. All right. Uh, it is a cross between Harry Brown and Goliath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking. I, I was thinking I I've never I, I think. I think I'm going to veto any movie about a dog dying that we ever pick <laughs> for the rest of this podcast. Well, the thing is, you didn't know what this movie was. No, when no, I, no, not, it, so. I had no idea there was a dog in it, and I figured Brian Cox played a character named Dread. Right. Uh, that's all I knew. <laughs> and I knew those two things, that there was no dog, and that Brian Cox <laughs> plays a character named Red. And I was wrong about both of those. Um... Yeah, I didn't find this movie hateful. Really? Uh, but yeah, certainly I don't think I'd recommend it to anyone. I, I wouldn't go so far as to say I hated it, but it, I just thought it was really boring and very predictable. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, when scenes, like right before a scene happens, you're like, oh, I bet this is about to happen. And yeah. Clearly it, it did. Right. And the acting was good. There's oh, some yeah. good acting in it. Uh, Brian Cox, of course, is, uh, pretty good mm-hmm. in everything I've ever seen him in. Yeah. Uh, Tom Sizemore's in it, doing an okay job. Not my favorite Tom Sizemore job, no, but... No. Yeah. It's, uh... It's balanced between that fine line of uh, subdued and cartoony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's always got a little cartoony, doesn't he? Yeah. <clears throat> it's his eyes. <laughs> uh, it does not help that his hair is uh, bleach blonde in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not a good look for him. No. Yeah. Uh, Robert Englund is in this movie, uh, doing the finest acting job one can do behind a screen door. Yeah. <laughs> I think he maybe 
had the best performance in the film, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I he actually kind of agree. He was great. He was and really it was good. subtle. Yeah. Very subtle. I mean, he doesn't have a lot to use, I think, in maybe two, three scenes total. Yeah. Um, and it is all behind a screen door. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, he, uh, he's one of those guys I think everybody just assumes is just over the top because he's Freddy Krueger, right. you know. Uh, you know, you can, he can tone it down a lot yeah, when he needs to. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I haven't seen him in a lot, but. <clears throat> I mean, even other things I have seen him in where he's just, you know, not being crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, uh, he was, uh, he had a cameo in the movie Hatchet. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and even that, he was still kind of over the top, you know. I mean, he was, he was playing a victim. Right. But he was just, you know, cartoony redneck yeah. victim, you know. Was he like a fish boat? Yeah, fish yeah, yeah fishing on the boat, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the only other time I've ever seen him play really subtle or subdued is, uh, in Wes Craven's New Nightmare, where he plays himself. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not so much subdued as, uh, he's just playing normal. Himself, right. yeah. <laughs> he's acting like a human being. And was, was, uh, the actress that played his wife, is that Amanda Plummer? Is yes. that her name? Mm-hmm. She looks super familiar. Do you uh, recognize her? She, yeah, she's, uh... I think she was in The Fisher King, and she was also in Pulp Fiction. Those are the two That's movies. That's right. That okay, Pulp from. Fiction. I was, like, picturing her being really crazy. Yeah. And I was like, Natural Born Killers? Like, where did I see her? She may even be in that. I don't I, know. I think it was Pulp Fiction. It was definitely Pulp Fiction. She was great. She was Honey Bunny, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought she was excellent. That, yeah, that, those were, like, my favorite scenes in the entire movie was when Brian Cox, uh, when Mr. Ludlow would visit the, uh, what are the names? Uh, the, the somethings. I can't remember. The, yeah. The Dowds or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Robert Englund and Amanda Plummer played a married couple. Right. And those were, yeah, I think, yeah, that was like my favorite scenes in the movie just because of the acting. I think all three of those actors are awesome. Right. Uh, yeah, there's three kids in the movie. Uh, two of the kids are brothers. They're the sons of Tom Sizemore's character. And then the third kid is like super white trash, you know, kid that is, uh, Parents are Robert Englund and Amanda Plummer's. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so Brian Cox is uh, slowly trying to get justice on all <laughs> yeah. the other kids. Yeah, he's going, yeah, just kind of going around. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, it's like a, you feel bad for him because you know, you know, they killed his dog, and right. you know, he wants justice. But like, you really just want to see him like beat the fuck out of him, right? You know, but he's like going around. He's trying to do it in the right way. All right, yeah. And, and, I mean, I think that, for me, raised the movie a little bit above your standard uh, revenge flick. Yeah. Is that uh, he, he's not instantly just trying to, you know, go in guns a blaze and then, you know, kick everybody's ass. Right. But at the well, same time. Kids, right. Kids. But at the same time, you do kind of want that. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> So, uh, this movie had two directors, uh, one whose name I can pronounce, uh, Lucky McKee, and the other one whose name looked, uh, completely unintelligible, just a jumble of letters <laughs> on the screen. Uh, oh, I didn't notice that. What little I know about this movie, Lucky McKee was the original director, uh, directed the decent chunk of the movie and then got fired. Huh. Uh, and then was replaced by, uh, Foreign man jumble letter. Uh, <laughs> I didn't notice that. Yeah. So, wonder what the story is there. Uh, what little I read was, uh, I think the reporter, the uh, the girl in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was originally cast uh, uh, to be played by a, uh, an actress by the name of Angela Bettis, who has worked with Lucky McKee in like I think all of his movies that he's ever made, mm. uh, in like in one way or another. Uh, they're just, like, really good friends, and they always work together. And the producers of the movie uh, didn't want her, so they hired the girl who was actually in the movie. And Lucky McKee kind of protested about that and uh, was let go. Huh. But he'd already shot some of it? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> huh. So I kind of wonder if, like, the unevenness in the story is due to that. Uh, that would that would yeah. make sense. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know, though. It, like, it really didn't feel like there were... Parts that were, you know, one tone and parts that were another to me. Right. It, it just all, like, like I don't know. It kind of just reminded me of something 
like my mom would watch. Right. You know, like like a Nicholas Sparks movie or something, only with a darker sort of tone. Right. But but I mean as far as just Yeah, like I, I didn't like much about it. I, I didn't like the music, I didn't like the story, I didn't like the pace. All I really liked were, were the actors. Right. I can I can get behind that. Um I do think uh because the the instigating incident happens so early in the movie, I don't think you really get a chance to connect with, you know, Ludlow and his love for Red. Right, yeah. You know, and I think that... But yeah, that hurt it. That hurts it a lot, because, cause, I mean, you know, there's only so much sympathy you can gain from just being a pet owner. Right. You know... Yeah, I mean, it's like, well, man, that would suck if that happened to you know my dog or my cat or I would, whatever. I would kill those kids, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, but you know, if you don't actually, but but that sort of knowledge going in beforehand, or that emotion going in beforehand, mm-hmm. uh, but not really seeing Brian Cox feel that himself, right. you know, I, I think that hurts it. <clears throat> Yeah, he just yeah, he's just hanging out with his dog. Yeah, yeah. I mean, clearly they're friends, but right, you know. Well, I mean, I guess later on, we... no, we really don't even. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it was like just and like even the all the the three boys at the very beginning of the movie, as soon as they walk up, you know, you know like, exactly what's happening. Oh yeah, yeah, it's like like I had no idea. I had never read a blurb about this movie or heard anybody even mention it. Right. So I had no idea what the plot was about. And the first thing I when I saw this kid was like, "Oh man, they're gonna kill his dog." Yeah, <laughs> and they do yeah. right right off the bat. Uh, yeah, it is pretty predictable, uh, very slow. Uh, and yeah, you, I mean, you're rooting for Brian Cox throughout the whole movie, right. and he just doesn't do a ton. And I, again, I, I think that helps it and it hurts it because you really do want them to just. Kick some ass. Yeah, and, and that, like that brings up a good point. The the weirdest thing about this whole <clears throat> his whole character is, you know, like for the first, you know, half of the movie or so, you're like, you know, why don't you just kick some ass? Right. And then by the time he actually is ready to kick some ass, I'm like, ah, just forget about it. It's over. <laughs> you're ready. You know, just don't even bother at this point. Right. And then he and then he like tries to kick a little ass, and you're like, like that's what felt so uneven about it. It's like it like took him. It took me a lot less time to get angry enough to kill right. the the uh, antagonist than it did the protagonist. Right. I uh, that was weird. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, because, cause, I mean, again, I, I did appreciate the fact that he, he tried to do the right thing. You know, confronting, you know, the father, you know, and, you know, but again, you know, as soon as you see it's Tom Sizemore, you know exactly <laughs> what's going to happen. Uh, yeah, if it would have been Alan Thick, it would have been like, oh, maybe, maybe yeah. he'll talk to the kids. Right, He's yeah. really good at that. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Gross is really good at talking to the kids. He'll, he'll tell them what it is. <laughs> um, uh, Can you for- imagine Tom Sizemore <clears throat> was like the dad on Growing Pains? <laughs> Every episode, you'd be like, good job, Mikey, let's go have Clue in the garage. <laughs> Maybe I don't have a better show. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, then maybe there would be uh, a legitimate reason for Kirk Cameron being a uh, Nazi, uh, over-the-top, <laughs> born-again Christian. Because they hung out with Tom Sizemore right. when he's a little too young. Yeah, he needs to redeem himself <laughs> desperately. <laughs> <laughs> oh... <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't hate this movie, but I uh, by no means could I recommend it to anyone to watch. Rue Morg, really? Yeah. That is, that'd be like Rue Morg reviewing the Little House on the Prairie movie. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's, it's... there's like more horror in like, oh my god, a kid fell down a well and now they're blind. <laughs> That's more horrific than anything. I mean, there was like a worm and a corpse on this, in this movie at one point. That would have been like the only four seconds in the movie that right. you would think would warrant them noticing. Well, Jack Ketchum, I guess, has written a lot of uh, sort of 
based on true, uh, but also fictionalized uh, crime novels, mm. and they're all like very gruesome and then very, uh, you know, based in like you know perversity and and, and uh, serial killers and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, Lucky McKee, I think, up to this point had only directed horror movies, oh, okay. so. So it was more like, they were like, well, we gotta at least look at this because these people. Right, but like, I mean, you know, the, the reviews for the movie, you know, I just, it, uh, you know, yeah, they, they covered it quite a bit. And huh. so, but yeah, it's definitely, definitely not a horror movie. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like not even, yeah, no, nowhere near. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's just kind of a substandard revenge movie. Yeah, uh, about a dog. A well acted, a well acted substandard revenge <laughs> movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I've seen two of uh, Lucky McKee's other movies, and I enjoyed them quite a bit. Uh, one's called May, uh, which uh, starred Angela Bettis, and it's sort of a uh, just a really twisted take on the Frankenstein story. Okay. Movie. Uh, and then the other one I saw called The Woods, uh, in which Bruce Campbell is in. Oh. Uh, uh, this is like a haunted woods witches type movie. Huh. And very good. I never heard of it. Yeah. I recommend those both. Mm-hmm. Over this one? Over this one, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it's too bad. Yeah. It's too bad. Uh, it was, yeah, uh, I've been wanting to see this for a while, and yeah, it's just kind of ultimately disappointing. Hmm. Huh. Well, don't feel bad. At least it wasn't Goliath. That's true. Uh, could have been worse. Yeah, it could have been. I should have just picked the other red. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just go watch that instead. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the, the only other thing that I really have to say about this movie is uh, the one brother, the uh, the one with the, the, uh, the younger brother, uh, Harold, Harold, right? Uh, who, from the get-go, pretty much, you know, feels like shit about the entire thing that's happening. You know, even protests not, a little, protests a little, yeah, but uh, not enough to stop, you know, the killing of Red. Uh, that guy plays that character in everything I have ever seen. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, a kind of a squeamish uh, teen. Yeah, uh, he was a uh, fairly major character in a show called Veronica Mars, where he. Pretty much played the exact same character. Huh. Uh, he was, uh, uh, I think he was also in, uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street remake where, he, I mean, obviously there's nothing for him to feel guilty about in the movie, but, you know, he does play sort of the, you know, jittery, you know, uh, male lead character right. in that movie, you know. Like, not the alpha male. Right, alpha, yeah, right. yeah. He's the Zeta male. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and he wasn't too bad. Yeah, I, I like him when yeah. I see him in things. But he, he does that thing very well. Yeah. But that is, like, pretty much the only thing I've seen him do. I know he was, uh, Impulse in Smallville as well. But, oh, uh, really? I never saw any of those because that is a piece of shit show. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I heard, I heard about Arrow. Oh, yeah. Um, now, is this true? Someone told me that the reason it's not called Green Arrow was because of the negative uh, connotations with the word green as 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 uh, as it relates to recycling green in the earth. Oh no, I've never heard that. I just assumed it was because of Green Lantern failing at the uh, box office. Okay, Jer- well, Jeremy said he read that they they didn't want the negative connotation of like environmentalism associated with the show. <laughs> <laughs> that was like negative connotation. Right. What the hell? Yeah, like, I don't. Uh, I've not heard that. Okay. Uh, I'm 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 leaning towards my theory of just uh, green lantern. Green Warner, lantern. Warner Brothers trying to back away from the word green because right. uh, that spells doom. Have you seen the trailer for it? No. Uh-huh. I mean, it it only vaguely looks like uh, it would be even slightly based on the Green Arrow. Uh, I mean, like the main character is Ollie Queen. He crash lands on a desert island and trains himself to be an archer, and that's pretty much it. Uh, huh. but in one of the trailers, like right towards the end, for like half a second, uh, you see Deathstroke's mask. Really? Yeah. 
So That's I'm wondering, cool. are they going to have like actual supervillains in this thing? Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> Costumes right off the bat. Right, yeah. Does he have the yellow goatee? Uh, no, he does not have any goatee. Uh, he does not wear a mask, just wears a hood. Huh. I probably won't check it out. I'm going to have to check out the first episode. Yeah. yeah. If it was a movie, probably not. Yeah. But since it's on TV, if it's on a day that I'm not doing anything, I'll watch it. Check it out. All right. I'm a, I'm a Green Arrow fan. I gotta, I gotta at least give the first that's episode right. a chance. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. I forget that you, yeah, you were kind of a big fan. Yeah. I've never, I think I've read a handful of, I think I read like the Longbow Hunters or something else and some JLA with them in it, but. Right. I mean, my favorite stuff is the, the Mike Grell stuff, but, uh, yeah. who knows if they'll, who knows what direction the show is going right. to take here. Yeah. I mean, I guess my it'll biggest fear is they'll Smallville it up. It'll just be Smallville with a quiver. Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they already had Green Arrow on that, yeah. And it was awful. They didn't, they didn't look the same, did they? Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Not the same guy playing the, in the show. Right. Yeah. Which is weird, because, I mean, you know, they've already had a show with a Green Arrow in it where he was... Wasn't just a guest star, like he was a major character in like the last half, you know, like last five seasons of that show. Uh, so I mean, they've got that to go on. Why, huh? Yeah. You know, why all of a sudden be shy about having a Green Arrow show when he's already been, you know, a major part of another successful show? Was he called Green Arrow? Yeah, on Smallville, like mm-hmm. not just Arrow, just Green Arrow, huh. yep. or Ollie. This has been Green Arrow talk. <laughs> <laughs> or just arrow talk. Arrow talk, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, um, yeah that, that's it. Yeah. I guess. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can't think of anything. I like this pickup truck. It was cool. <laughs> nice hand lettering on this side. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, just disappointing. Yeah. Alright, see you, Brick. Yeah. Alright. To sleep, I think about the implication of diving in too deep, possibly the complications, especially at night. I worry over the situations, I know we'll be alright. Perhaps it's just an imagination. streets smell the desperation at least there's pretty lights and though there's little variation it nullifies the night Possibly the complications, the 
especially at night I worry over situations there I know it'll be alright It's just overkill Day after day reappears Night after night my heart beats Welcome back to Gutter Trash. Hello! <clears throat> Indeed. Burn me. It's all right. I know what your excuse is. I don't know what mine is. Oh, what, what, what's going on? Uh, just something in my throat. Oh, great. I'm making you sick already. Uh, it was before you even came over. Mm. so Because you, you canceled on me last night for drawing night. I did. Uh, which is a rarity. I mean, I mean, not a rarity that you cancel on me. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> it, it is. Uh, a rarity that uh, you cancel on me for sickness. Oh, I... When, how often do I cancel drawing? Eh, well, you know, it's, uh, the last two months it's been, uh, more <coughs> you not coming to drawing night than you coming to drawing no, night. Yeah. I maybe missed, oh, I'm going miss for space. <laughs> I missed when I went to visit my relatives in Tennessee. I missed when I was sick last night. In Toronto. Toronto. Oh, yeah. That's four. Yeah. <laughs> It means in the last two months, I'll be pity pity. <laughs> yeah, sorry. That's no, all right. I read a shit ton of comics yesterday. Yeah, yeah. During drawing night, uh, a little bit during drawing night, uh, most throughout the day. Uh, mm. I decided uh, that I was going to spend all Saturday just reading comics. That sounds like a great Saturday. It was a fantastic Saturday. Yeah. Uh, Anything uh, of note? Uh. Ooh. Trying to think of anything that like just like, wowed me when I read it. Uh, not really. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, Mostly you're in like brand new stuff, like the last few weeks worth. Uh, yeah, because uh, I mentioned I think on the show last week that I had gotten my comic shipment in, so uh, I was just trying to read, you know, everything that I had been caught up with up to this point. Right. You know, I was just reading the next issues of, and then trying to, you know just knock out a bunch of stuff that I haven't read through yet. Uh, so I read uh, the new issue of Batman and the uh, <clears throat> new issue of Wonder Woman were, were pretty good. Did you read Before the Watchmen? Uh, I do not have that. Oh, uh, okay. I know if you bought that. I bought it, but I do not have it. Okay. Because it will not come until the end of this month. Uh, okay. I thought they just sent everything that was like out up until then. They did. Okay, but they sent that before... Watchmen came right. before it at before. the end of May. Okay, which is the shipment right before. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Okay. I will get the before Watchmen at the end of June, mm-hmm. the month that that comes out, uh, which is yeah. this month. It's so weird. Uh, <clears throat> so no, I have not read before Watchmen. Um, I did read Batman Annual number one or oh, whatever yeah. that one is, mm-hmm. and I did not like it. Really? Yeah. I haven't read it yet. I've read all the other Scott Snyder Batmans, but right. uh, this one like very, very loosely ties into the Court of Owls things. Like, I mean, you don't even need to have read the Court of Owls stuff to to get it. I mean, they do mention it, but it's not important. Right. Um, it's basically reintroducing Mister Freeze into the uh, New Fifty Two, huh. and it's not good. Huh? That's too bad. Yeah. I did pick it up, so I'll have to. I'll have to see for myself. Right. Uh, I was very disappointed in it. You may not have the same disappointment, because uh, as far as I'm concerned, the definitive uh, Mr. Freeze origin is from the Batman the Animated Series. Hey. Oh, okay. I think uh, you're going to say uh, Batman <coughs> the 1960s series. Nope. <clears throat> Mr. Freeze never had an origin until Batman the Animated Series. And Paul Denny and Bruce Timm came up with uh, his origin, basically. And uh, it was fucking amazing. It's one of the best episodes of that uh, that show. Huh. And uh, this kind of ruins it. Oh, really? Yeah. 
What was the animated origin? Uh, the animated origin is that Dr. Freeze was a uh, uh, scientist working in the field of uh, cryogenics. Uh, his wife fell ill, and he froze her uh, while he tried to find a cure for her disease. Uh, but Bruce Wayne, uh, you know, put a stop to his funding, and so uh, he got into a fight with him in the lab. And uh, during the process, he you know became all frozen and stuff. Huh. Uh, and, and blamed Bruce Wayne for basically killing his wife. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, you so know, he did it for love. He did it for love. Yeah. Uh, and this, uh, this changes that. Huh. Yeah. So Scott Snyder kind of give a cold shoulder to Bruce Tim on this one. A little bit. <clears throat> Let's never talk about that again. <laughs> All right. Uh, I did read uh, the first issue of Earth 2, mm. which is the uh, reintroduction of the Justice Society into the new 52 universe on an alternate Earth. Game. <laughs> it was okay. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Uh, could really only recommend it to diehard superhero fans. All right. uh, nothing... Nothing that I think really stands out about it uh, that I would uh, say, everybody needs to read this book. Right. Uh, I need to read this book because I like it. Yeah, it sells pretty well. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. I have no interest. Yeah. Uh, I read um, read a couple of books I didn't like. Uh, World's Finest, which stars uh, Huntress and Power Girl. Uh, was was not very good at all. It was some decent art. Uh, Dial H was uh, pretty awful. Really? Yeah. I thought that one might be fun. Mm, nope. <laughs> no. Not a bit. Um, I read the first issue of the Star Trek Doctor Who crossover. Ooh, how's that? Uh, not great, and some of the worst art I have ever seen in any comic that has ever been published. Oh, man. And I have read a shit ton of mini-comics. <laughs> wow. So you even put mini-comics in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, hey, if you want rid of that, I'm pretty sure they sold out and we're short one copy. All right. We can trade it for another equally cover-priced book. Sure. Done. <clears throat> Sweet. And I'll even have issues two and three and four for you oh, as well. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> Are you going to at least read them? Uh, I'll read them, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's it's sort of the problem I, that uh, I have discovered with this mail order thing, is that uh, if I'm deciding to try out a book, I am stuck with like at least the next three issues of it. Yeah, because uh, you're ordering so far in advance. Right. right. So that's the downside, but, uh, you yeah, know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Small price to pay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially, <clears throat> literally, small price to pay if you're paying, like, the discount. Like yeah. 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 it's, uh, it's not bad. Yeah. I think that's, uh, it's helping in sort of the, uh, well, at least I can try this out, is that I won't be paying, you know, four bucks for something. Right. right. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I, mean, I think a lot more people would. You know how, like, Vertigo and Image, a lot of times they do dollar number ones? Right. I think that helps a lot. I mean, as far as driving, you know, people to at least try it out. Peek at it. Right. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I think all their trades are at least $10, or at least the the very first trade is $10. Right. So, you know, I mean, yeah, they they do a decent job, I think, of of making the price point attractive anyway. Right. Smart. Yeah. Um, yeah, otherwise, uh, nothing else is really going on in my life. What about you? Uh, I've been s- sick for two days. Right. Uh, that's, covered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's about <laughs> it. Except for, uh, I do start my new job tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. My first official day on the payroll. Oh, nice. Pretty excited. Even though you haven't gotten your background check. And I'm, and I'm, I'm going to show up sick without, without a background check. <laughs> that should go over well. Yeah, maybe, maybe we get sent home. Oh, I hope not. <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised though. And then fired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did uh, fill out all the paperwork, and I was looking it over today, 
and uh, just to make sure I, you know, checked all the boxes or whatever. Right. And I noticed in, in the box, in the, like, question where it says, you know, like, what race are you? And then it's got, like, six different boxes. Right. I checked African American. Huh. Which I didn't notice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't on purpose. So. So wait. You're not? I'm not. I'm only 68% African American. <laughs> Um, so I guess, I'd, I mean, do you just mark that out and recheck the other box? I Does guess. Make it look Maybe stupid? white it out. White out the the black box? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, the check. Okay. No, not the entire <laughs> line. <laughs> it just seems like somehow racist to do it. But I mean, <laughs> should I just turn it on and whenever they mention it, be like, oh, it was obviously a mistake. Because does that look better than actually marking something out and redoing it? I don't know. Just mark out the check. You don't have yeah. to... You don't have to delete the entire line on right. the sheet of paper, <laughs> which is apparently what you seem to think you need to do. <laughs> oh, I, I just don't want to mess anything up. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I've never made that mistake. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> but I know of. I mean, maybe every right. time I do, I don't know. Right. Like when I fill out apartment, uh, you know, uh, paperwork or whatever. Right. But yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna start at We Care Arts tomorrow, so I'm excited. Good luck. Yeah, hopefully I'm not. Don't sound as terrible. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm um, going to my regular job tomorrow, like I always do. Mm. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Aw. Yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, fair. You? Any, uh, more? Any more than that? Nothing else too exciting. Yeah, mm. it's been kind of a slow week. Fair. Um. Yeah, I sold some art yesterday. Oh, yeah. original art? Yeah. Nice. I yeah. uh, sold uh, two pieces that I had drawn like years ago. Uh, they, they were two separate pieces, but they were combined to make one. Okay. So I sold it for 20 bucks and then 5 bucks for frame. So Sweet. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. It's always nice to sell some of your art. Yeah. I picked up a couple more commission works from... Uh, from a Mr. Matt Brassfield. Wow. Which I am more than happy to do as long as he is uh, willing to pay. Yeah. <laughs> it's when he decides that uh, I need to do it for free that we have issues. Those are issues, yeah. 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 I did pick up a couple more Rob Liefeld comics from yep. my collection this week. <clears throat> Somebody, oh yeah, I touched the lady's breast at work that was not my girlfriend. Oh. Twice. Twice. Uh, I guess that's worth telling. Yeah. <laughs> um, these these two ladies brought in <clears throat> a bunch of comics. And there was like two ladies. One of them was probably in her 50s and one was in her 40s. And they wanted me to help them like get this giant tub of comics out of their SUV. Uh-huh. And so I went out to the SUV and I, I like, you know, we got it out. And I was like looking at them on the sidewalk. And I pulled out a few things. Like they had like a, a Hulk uh, 340, like the Wolverine cover and... Um, the first three issues of the Dark Horse Conan, and you know, just nothing amazing. Um, but a few like Savage uh, She Hulk number one from the seventies. That, oh, well. that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but other than those, like it was just crap after crap. I and mean, there was like thousands of books of crap. And I was helping them like push this uh, trunk back in to the the side door of the SUV. For some reason, they they wanted it in the side. They didn't want it in the back. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> and. Uh, and, uh, you know how, like, the the passenger, the rear passenger doors are usually kind of weird-shaped, you know? Like, it's not like a giant rectangle. It's like some weird triangle or something. I don't know. Sure. But, but we were, like, pushing in there, and my my hand, like, I, I reached to get the, the bottom of the of the crate that we were pushing in, and I just, like, scooped this woman's breast, like, an inch into the air. And I'm like, <laughs> and I, like, take my hand away, you know, like, I didn't say anything. And I just, like, grabbed another spot of the trunk, and I'm, like, pushing it in. And, then, like, as I'm pushing that, like, it starts to fall on. I, you know, like, react, and my arm, like, like my forearm just brushes against uh, the same breast. And I was like, oh, my God, I just touched your breast twice in <laughs> eight seconds. And she didn't say anything. Well, she liked it. Well, that's, I was worried that she would be like, what the fuck are you doing? You know? Right. But we walk back in, and I'm, like, have them sign something, you know, because we always have to have them sign when we pay up. Right. And, uh... And then she signs, and she's and she just like kind of looks at me. She's like, "Thank you, thanks a lot." <laughs> and I was like, "You're welcome." 
And I, but, but I was excited because you got to touch food. Because I got to touch food. No, because uh, she had uh, Wolverine number 154 and 155 that Liefeld drew, and I didn't have either one of those. So, <laughs> so I added those. I mean, we only bought like 12 comics out of, out of the thousands that I looked through. I mean, it was crazy. But another one that she had, and this was the gem of the bunch, was a New Mutants 98 first Deadpool. Ooh. Which I think is worth close to a hundred dollars now. Nice. But it had this fold all the way down the front cover. Uh-huh. And like so so I figured we'd we'd price it super low, like twenty or thirty bucks. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I might just buy that because I don't have that one. Right. <clears throat> nice to add to the old life filled box. <laughs> <laughs> and that one might be one I could sell later. Right. You know, yeah. As the other ones will always be quarter books. I noticed uh on your uh, day off diary, that uh, a couple of weeks ago you were reading uh, the new Young Blood that came out. Oh yeah, uh, you yeah, know that one's not drawn by Rob Liefeld. He he drew part of it. No. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. No. Merritt Michaels did. There's someone like that. It was a Rob Liefeld clone. It wasn't Rob Liefeld. I'm pretty sure he did some of the art. Mm. I could. I'd bet money on it. Right. I think it was like him and another guy. <clears throat> a guy I can't remember. This is probably the guy you're talking about. But. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he coded it for some of it. That means he probably just did layouts. <laughs> probably. He probably just did a... Like, this circle here represents a train yard with, like, right. fighting. Probably uh, the, the thing that uh, the thing that made uh, the infinite go away, which is he just wanted to do sketches and then have someone else do the finished art. Yeah. 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 Well, he's a busy man. He's got that, uh, he's got your Deathstroke, the Terminator. There. He's writing, uh, was it? He's co-writing. Savage Hawkman? Yeah. And, uh, something else. Co-writing Grifter. Grifter, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of which is being cancelled. Grifter? I don't know. Oh. I oh, said yeah. one of which. Well, I thought you knew which one. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> How do you know one of them is being cancelled? Uh, I read it on the uh, okay, okay. Uh, DC is, uh, Prepping up for their next wave of cancellations. Wow. And uh, one of the Rob Liefeld books is going away. Huh. Who knows uh, what other one they'll give to him to replace <laughs> yeah, it. they'll I give him know. four more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Justice League, Batman, <laughs> Superman, and uh, Teen Woman. Titans. Oh, he's got to do Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's so great at drawing women. Well, they'll wait till they cancel something else to give him yeah, Wonder Woman. Yeah, every, every time, like, that, you know, he clearly can't keep pace, they give him twice as much. Right. Oh, you weren't. You weren't able to do that every month, so let's give you two other books instead. It's <laughs> very strange. Yeah, he's been doing his uh, thing monthly. Uh, Hawk and Dove was never late. Yeah, yeah. There's only been uh, one issue of uh, the other three books that he's now doing out so far. Yeah. He's uh, he's not a guy who's uh, squelching on his deadlines anymore. Yeah. He, he's got a work ethic. Yeah. Yeah, he pumps that out. I thought he was really good at like doing number ones and then just kind of never finishing. Yeah, not it. anymore. Not in the last uh, couple of years. Hmm. That is the one thing I got to give him uh, is that uh, he has done a ton of work lately. Yeah, he's uh, true. not missed a deadline in uh, in years except for on the infinite. <clears throat> That's too bad. I would like to see that go somewhere. Like, I wish he would go away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think uh, he's got to have a good nest egg by now, right? He doesn't need to work anymore. Yeah, he never bought any autographed baseballs. Right? Right, yeah, he can uh, he can just uh, stop and live the good life. <laughs> <laughs> or at least he should. <laughs> oh, Rob Liefeld. Rob Liefeld. I'd still love to meet him. That'd be cool. I would not. He's never going to be at any of the shows I go to, though. Nah. Unless I go to, like, San Diego or something. Well, you might do some shows here and there, right? Uh, I bet he only does the really, really big ones, though. Like, mostly West Coast, probably. What if uh, someday he's at uh, Gym City, huh? Ooh, that'd be yeah. cool. I mean, you guys have had a, uh, a Mark Wade there in the That's past. That's true. That's true. A Chris Claremont. A Marv Wolfman, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, Paul Go- oh, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, indeed. So, yeah, I got nothing else. Yeah? Well, 
guess I could pick a comic. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, I had a comic picked, and then I decided I'm not going to have it finished by the time I come over here today, which is what happened. Okay. That was an awkwardly worded sentence. Um, yeah, it was like, I was going to pick something that was like nine issues, and I've only read the first two, and I was like, eh. All right. Oh, wait. <laughs> it's a bit much. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, they're fa- it's a faster read, but... Yeah, but still, I mean, we're going away this weekend. I'm not going to have any time oh, yeah. to read it after you read That's it. true. So, uh, we should uh, pick something uh, short and sweet, hopefully. From hell! <laughs> Veto. <laughs> <laughs> oh. for, for more than just that. <laughs> I'm going I'm to officially use that as on record as one of your vetoes for this year. Nope. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> no, I, I picked something that I think would would uh, be a little faster to read. Archie versus Punisher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wish I had that. Uh, I do. Mm. <laughs> Can I just pick that instead? Sure. <laughs> Archie versus Punisher. Here it goes. <laughs> no, no. I picked. Uh, well, I was thinking. Um, unless you count the like the the Batgirl Catwoman book, we've never we've never reviewed a Batman comic. We reviewed it. We did the. Oh, we've done the. Mask of Phantom. No, we didn't do Arkham Asylum. Yeah, we did. Sam Keith, Arkham Asylum. Well, Batman wasn't in that. Yeah, still. <laughs> we've, mean, we've done Batman books. No, I, I even looked over. I even searched on Good Seriously? Trash. Yeah. The only thing that came up, actually, the Sam Keith one didn't even come up. The uh, Batgirl uh, Catwoman really? thing came up. Yeah. Really? I know. I was surprised, too, because we did Mask of the Phantasm, but that was a movie. Right. But I was like, we've never actually read a Batman comic. Seriously? I know, right? I, I do not believe that for an instant. <laughs> Why would that happen? I know. Like, my favorite comic character ever is Batman. You're wearing a Batman shirt right now. <laughs> like, literally, you are. I just spent all day reading Batman comics. <laughs> yeah, you were reading a Batman comic when I walked in, and I was like, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, yeah, let's pick a Batman comic. All right. So There's a lot of them. Which there, one? All of them? Uh, yeah, we're going to do the whole That's entry. a little more than nine measures. <laughs> no, we're just doing all the detectives. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, no, a brand new one came out like a week ago. Okay. And I, I picked it up, and I just read it today. Okay. It's called Batman Death by Design. Oh, the Chip Kid? Yeah. Yeah. Chip Kid and Dave Taylor. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, did not realize that that even came out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is in your living room. Whoa. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Excited. Sweet. Yeah. Is that really a Batman book, though? Is it more just an artsy fartsy <laughs> book by Chip Kid? Well, we'll have to find out next week. All right. <laughs> no spoilers here. Cool. But his name is in the title. All right. That's all that matters <laughs> for our Google search purposes. <laughs> all right. Cool. Sweet. Yeah. Let's do that then. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go take some more uh generic Benadryl. Alright. I'm gonna I'm gonna read some other Batman books, uh <laughs> and then uh save that for, for later. That's cool. And uh probably watch a lot more How I Met Your Mothers. Oh nice. Yeah, yeah I was hoping to uh watch some television with my lady friend this weekend, but yeah. it did not work out that way because of Illness. In airborne illness. Right? Yeah. But let's see what happens next time. <clears throat> I will uh, actually. I'll probably spend part of the evening uh, disinfecting your microphone. <laughs> oh, that's for, just for Joe. <laughs> just for Joe. Nice. It's <laughs> very <laughs> kind of you. Uh, all right. Let's get out of here. All right. Good night, night everybody. Good night. <laughs> You can subscribe to Gutter Trash at iTunes or directly at guttertrash.net. If you go to iTunes, please leave us a review. You can email us at eric at guttertrash.net or jason at guttertrash.net. For more info, you can find us on Facebook. Or you can go to seanborn.net or buyerbeware.guttertrash.net. Listen to our sister podcast, League Night, at league.guttertrash.net. Thank you for listening. Until next time.